It was a turning point for me when I realized what am I expecting my letting go to accomplish? Mm. And I realized, oh, I want to let go so I can get control back. Well, that's not really what letting go actually means. Letting go means letting go. Hey, everybody, welcome to church. If you're joining us for the first time at any of our locations or online, I'm especially glad you're here. We're in week two of a series we've called Breathe. It's all about interrupting the anxiety that so many of us struggle with and finding our way to or back to peace in our minds and hearts. And if we're honest, doesn't it seem like whatever our faith level, background, or age for so many of us, anxiety just seems to be ever present these days. And I know that's often true for me. So what could it look like if we could just breathe? If we could breathe in real hope and joy for ourselves and breathe out real hope and joy to the people in the world around us. Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Over the next few minutes, you'll hear from real people in our community of faith who have faced or are facing anxiety and who, through their connection with Jesus and with others, are finding ways to interrupt it. In between, I'll be joined on camera by two of our location pastors, Daryl Smith and James Copeland, to talk about anxiety and how we can overcome it. And we intentionally asked some young adults from our church to share the stories you'll hear today really for two reasons. First, Our church has a passion to reach the next generation with the good news about Jesus. And if you're under the age of 35, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, I want you to know this is a church that respects both the potential and the pressures of your stage of life. And second, sometimes I think it's easy for those of us who are a little bit further along in life to forget what it's like to face the anxiety of young adulthood. This generation needs us, even though we're often just as anxious as they are, to light the way for them especially when it comes to showing them how knowing Jesus can make a difference. So I'd like to invite you behind closed doors right now for a deep dive into interrupting anxiety as we face our pressures head on and learn how to breathe again. Hey, everybody, I want to welcome you into the room today, and I'm so honored to be joined by our location pastor from Hokesson, Daryl Smith, our location pastor from Middletown, James Copeland. Love you guys, and grateful you're in the room today as we talk about this anxiety thing. In just a moment, I do want to ask you kind of uh, how this hits home for you and why this series is, is meaningful to you. But first, I know for some of us, all of our locations today, and if you're joining us online, you may be wondering, like, what do three pastors have to tell me about my anxiety? They don't really understand what I'm going through or what it's like to struggle with anxiety. And I just know for me, uh, that is definitely not the case. This has been a real issue in my life um, for many years. I, th- I think one of my biggest issues with anxiety is actually that I keep thinking it's going to go away. Like I'll just wake up one day, never have another anxious thought. My mind will be clear. I won't get stressed out about anything. And so far that has not been the case. Um, But I am learning the path to peace. And I know you guys well and and know uh, your stories around this to some degree, but I'd love for you to just take a moment and yeah, talk about why does this hit home for you? um, And why do you think this is a meaningful series in the life of our church? Daryl, we'll start with you. Yeah, I love when you said, you know, if you're out there wondering, like, does it affect pastors? Absolutely. And it's an ongoing thing. I mean, I can think of some clear examples in my life that stand out. But if you're wondering, like, does it happen? Yes, it happens. It's an ongoing, you know, struggle and battle, but I'm dealing with it. But I can think back uh, to it in high school, trying to decide on what college I was going to go to, what I was going to major in, my parents' expectations of me making those decisions. And then later on, after graduating, having kids, you know, going from just being married to having a set of twins and, Mm. you know, what that looks like and my role in being a parent of, you know, kids and being on my own and independent. Um, And then fast forward, what I want to do with my professional life. My kids are here. I got to make a living. How I'm going to provide for my family. All those things gave me anxiety. Um, And then just navigating that in real time, you know, every week every week. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. James, how about you? Yeah, and I would say the same thing. I, you know, have experienced anxiety at several different points in my life. It seems to manifest itself differently depending on the stage of life you're in, just like Pastor Darrell was talking about there. Um, and yeah, I can I can definitely remember, you know, distinct moments in my life where, it, you know, the anxiety almost felt crippling. Um, mm-hmm. And 
Um, thankful to have had the people that I had around me, the support system I had to get through those moments. But then, like you said, it's, it still shows up. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I know it will continue to show up. So that's why I'm excited about the series because I also realized that, you know, um, as someone in my teens and early 20s, as I was dealing with this, I realized that the church in general wasn't really tackling it head on at the time. So I'm excited that we're doing that because um, I think it's gonna be really beneficial for, for all of us to kind of really, hey, let's talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the interesting things about anxiety is actually that a lot of us are walking around feeling very anxious and assuming that we're the only one feeling very anxious. And the reality is it's just a shared experience for so many people. And that's what we're going to see today as we jump into this first round of stories from people in our church, just how this anxiety thing can affect us wherever we are, what stage, whatever stage of life we're in, and the difference that it can make when we learn how to do life with Jesus. So check this out. My name is Emma Iorio. I'm 21 years old, and I've been gathering at The Journey since my freshman year at University of Delaware, so about three years now. I'm Joxy. I'm 31 years old, and I'm on a photography team. I'm Theo Berry. I am 26, and I serve everywhere at Middletown. I have been dealing with anxiety um, definitely my whole life. It was really, it really took a turning point for me in 2020 during COVID. It's when I really took ownership over my anxiety, I think. A lot of my anxiety was rooted in academic anxiety. So it started off with math. I had a really hard experience with math. It was never my subject. Um, and it kind of translated into every other area of my life. Um, and I think with anxiety, it can stem from one area and then it can slowly creep up into every other area until it becomes like a total consuming thing. And that's when it gets really hard. Um, but in 2020, I really was like, this, this needs to change. Like I'm stuck at home, I have all this time. Like I need to really figure out like, why, like, why am I feeling this way? I think one of the most glaring um, moments was when I was 18 um, and, you know, freshman in college and I got hurt playing football. Uh, within a span of three months, I had surgery. Um, first ever surgery. <laughs> Uh, and I was down, uh, you know, girlfriend at the time, and I broke up in that span, and then the lady who raised me passed away. And, you know, at that time, it felt like the world was against me, right? Uh, and so in that moment, I took a long, delayed pause, which uh, really stopped a lot in my life. Um, but then I realized that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, hardship is is a revelation. <laughs> it can It can change direction. Um, but it also makes you stronger, and, and, it, and it lets you look back on it as I can today and say that God was there in the midst of it. Faith has played a very big role. Um, it's humbled me in a lot of ways, and I say this because I've recognized where my biggest fear and anxiety lies. That's where I've been trusting God the least, and in a way that like hurts a little bit, <laughs> um, because I'm like, oh, like, I'm worrying all about this. I'm worrying about this experience or this job, or if I'm gonna get this whatever, like all of this worrying is just at the end of the day showing me, okay, this is where I trust God the least. Like uh, prayer is big for me now. Um, I think when before it was like, does God even, if I even come to him about these things, like, is he gonna look at me differently? Is he even gonna like accept me? Um, and then I would think like, okay, I can't worship him because he knows like I was coming to him about this. Um, but now it's more so of like, I need you, God. I need you to hear me. I want this, I need to like release this to you because I know I can't handle it myself. What I've realized is, is that with fear and anxiety, there's no quick fix. That's just not possible. Um, it's one of those things that I think you constantly have to work through. And I think that's why like once you get through moments like that, it feels so rewarding and so good when you're in this new space because you know what it took to get you there. So I think although it is hard to kind of move through faith because usually there's a lot of trust involved with that, and I think fear and anxiety loves distrust. It loves that you're afraid to trust. It loves when you feel that way. So that's why I think the faith route is harder, but it's ultimately the most fruitful in the end. Um, and that's been proven to me time and time again. I think that that's kind of God's will for us in a way. Like he never said it was gonna be easy. We can read that time and time again in the Bible. You know, he's like, I know this isn't gonna be easy, but the next lines, I'm with you. Like I'm coming with you, we're going, we're going together. And I think that's like the most beautiful part. Um, and although it's harder in the end, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities and it's just beautiful outcome, I think. 
All right, so um, my first reaction is like, I feel like Emma should be sitting in my chair right now. Like, I mean, the, the take she had on anxiety so and, and connecting with with her faith uh, to cope was pretty amazing. But the, the one thing Emma, I want to if you're out there, we're looking for podcast participants. So, yes, yes, for sure. Um, but the one thing that um, that kind of struck me as I was listening, you know, Joxy kind of said something about, you know, as he was dealing with fear and anxiety he began to get fear and anxiety about yeah. having fear and anxiety. And right. and so he was like, hey, I'm dealing with this. Yeah. And because of that, I don't know that I can approach God. I don't know that I can worship God. I don't know that he's gonna accept me in this state. And um, so I would, as I was just kind of thinking through that, you know, isn't that the way it works? The enemy knows that if he can make us anxious mm-hmm. about our anxiety, um, then we begin to kind of disconnect. We disconnect from God, yeah. we disconnect from friends and family and and from other people close to us and, and all of that. So I guess my question for you guys would be, you know, what piece of advice would you have for someone who they might be watching us today and they're feeling that fear and anxiety and kind of right now they feel like, you know, yeah, they made it here today, but in the back of their mind, they're like, I just, I just need to be away from everything. Yeah. I need to disconnect because mm-hmm. they're anxious about how they're gonna be received. Yeah just yeah. acknowledging anxiety. Yeah, I know for me and some of the worst kind of moments of anxiety in my life, like what I think I crave is isolation. Like I think I, I just need to get away from all the noise and get away from all the pressure and get away from all the people that I feel like might be associated with that noise and pressure. But it's it's sort of like a quick fix medicine that actually does more harm on the back end, you know? And I think those things go hand in hand. Isolation and anxiety actually feed each other. Um, so we end up kind of drinking the poison uh, when we when we use isolation as a way to medicate our anxiety. We we think we're taking medicine, but we're really kind of taking more of the same um, poison in some ways. And I do think like what Emma said about anxiety creep is such a key kind of thing, right? Like this anxiety just is never satisfied to stay in one sphere of our lives. It it wants to spread. And you ask, you know, what's the advice for interrupting that? And we're going to talk about that, you know, throughout the rest of the series and next weekend specifically talk about what I think is the greatest ongoing tool we have um, in the way we connect with God and and climbing through some of those anxious moments. But the first thing I would say is you got to avoid the, the false medicine of like, if I isolate, I'll get over this anxiety. Nothing, nothing could be further from the truth, right? It just ends up feeding back into uh, the same thing. So yeah, what do you think, Daryl? No, I think that's good. I mean, also listening to Yaxi when he was sharing, you know, his story, he referenced prayer and how prayer he began to pray to start dealing with it. My specific question to you would be, is what role does prayer play play in managing anxiety? Uh, yeah, well, we're gonna. That's a little bit of a spoiler alert for next weekend's message. But I mean, I think that's it plays a massive role. The problem is, I think all of us rely on it too little, and then when we use it, use it in ways that aren't effective. Not because they're not like effective as a you know this is the exact way to pray, but because we don't understand what God's inviting us into when He invites us into prayer. We tend to treat prayer as a way to fix the external problem when God really intended it primarily to be a way to settle our internal soul. And so we're going to talk about that next week. But I think, yeah, what what Joxy said about going to prayer is more of that idea of this is not a quick fix. And it's a daily thing. We talk here about practicing a slot and spot, right? A time on your calendar, a place you go every day to breathe. To, to suck in the life-giving kind of breath of the presence of God and to be able to breathe out your anxieties and fears and worries in a prayerful state. And through reading scripture and prayer, it's not that it solves all of our problems, it's that it prepares us to live for that next 24 hours with more awareness of the peace and the power that we have access to through our relationship with God. So uh, yeah, I think that's a big part of it for sure. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things you you mentioned it too when Emma was talking about like that anxiety creep, it, it starts small. And I think it's it's really difficult for us to recognize kind of those catalyst moments of the anxiety. It's like, hey, it's beginning. We don't necessarily see it maybe until we're looking back on it. Yeah. Um, and so I guess, you know, as as I'm thinking about it, like how do you recognize it? Do you guys like do you recognize anxiety starting and and there's this this trigger for you that's like, okay, I need to lean in further here? Is is that something that happens for you guys? I mean, for me it's urgency. 
sense of urgency can sometimes be a sign that, you know, anxiety is starting to mount in mm-hmm. me. Like I've got to take care of all of these things when I see my perfectionism rise up. Is that yours? Still, still the word for yeah. me. Yeah, because I want to be such a perfectionist. When I realize I don't have a quick answer or a quick fix or, you know, a resolution to it, I begin to experience anxiety trying to figure out, A, why don't I know or have a solution to this? And then B, what am I going to do next, you know, to solve this this challenging issue that's creating anxiety? So, yeah, uh, it's, it's I don't have, you know, it's the perfectionism of me wanting to, to get it right and yeah, figure it out. It just creates more yeah. anxiety. I mean, you talked about the prayer thing, and our theme verses for this series are from Philippians 4 verses six and seven, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything, which on its own, like sounds like, oh, okay, you know? But when we keep reading, we we really get kind of that path. And, and again, we'll talk more about it next weekend, but so you gotta come back next weekend to hear the rest of it. But tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So I think in there, there's this this awareness of when we start to feel anxiety building, that we have a relationship with God that we can go to him and we can tell him what we need. We can thank him for what he has done in our lives. One of the things I remind myself now when I get anxious, which is one of the things that comes with being a little bit further along in life, is the extraordinary track record of faithfulness. God has. I've faced so many moments I thought were the end of me. They were not the end of me. So I get to kind of challenge my anxiety now with the track record of God's faithfulness. And when I tell him what I need and thank him for all he has done, then I experience God's peace, which exceeds when anything we can understand. I heard someone say one time, if you need understanding, then that means you can't have peace. Mm. And I think the biggest threat that brings anxiety into our lives, like like full storm is our desperate craving for understanding or for control. And it's actually not until we let go of our need for understanding and control that we can experience God's peace. And I, I, the last part of it is his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I believe God wants to guard our bank accounts and jobs and you know physical bodies, but that's not the promise in that verse. The promise is hearts and minds, meaning God does not say, I will fix your external circumstances. He says, I will stand guard around your internal world if you will learn how to communicate with me. And I think that's the the big piece that leads to that path of freedom from anxiety is, is how to do that. So now we're gonna dive into some more stories um, in just a moment. But one thing I wanna say just before we do is I know for some of you watching this right now, you're taking the step of baptism in a couple of weeks. And I feel like that's a big part of this as well, that the decision to be baptized for all of us who put our faith in Jesus is a decision to relinquish control of our lives. Yeah. And I think it sets us on that path of knowing that we can trust the one who's in control even when we feel like we're not. So as we jump into these next stories, let's continue to learn what it looks like to interrupt anxiety. My name is Michaela. I'm 24 and I serve on the prayer team. I'm a little bit serving on the worship team and I just started getting involved with Journey students. I'm Mike. I am 32 years old. I serve on the Hulk Essen production team. My name is Silas Montana. I'm 17 years old, and I've been coming to The Journey for one year. Hi, my name is Lindsay Govea. I'm 31 years old, and I serve in Journey Kids. I think faith is the missing component that I didn't have for so long of my life that kept me stuck in a cycle of spiraling for years. Um, But I think faith in the aspect of letting God come into it. Like, Jesus had these same feelings, and I think that's something that people with anxiety often neglect, is that he was human and experienced every emotion that we experience. And when we separate him from that space and we shun ourselves for having anxiety, I think it only separates us from the end goal, right? And so normalizing that, yes, we don't want to be stuck in anxiety, you know, that's not the the state of our heart, but also to allow him into that space and to allow him to heal some of that and just be, I think has been so transformative for me. I've been going through a season where I knew I needed God. And with my relationship with Him, it is when just doors opened up for me. Reading the Word and knowing that anxiety is not something that's God-given really made something click in my brain that my life does not have to look like this. And it can be so much better with Him and not being held down by that. It's easier said than done, but like just being able to surrender 
to God. Um, I think when you spend a lot of time praying and talking to God, you realize it's it becomes easier to let it go um, and to trust Him that He's got you. Um, so that my advice would just be like spend more time praying to God, like talk to God, and um, I think people have a tendency of. Well, I don't know if I don't know if this is most people, but I I know for me I definitely thought of prayer as like this procedural thing that you had to do a specific way or else it, it didn't work or it wasn't as efficient. Um, until I realized like prayer is literally just conversation with God and like talking to God and um, He's not God's not afraid of like our emotions and our messiness. So you know, in those moments of anxiety, I can be honest and be like, God, I I don't know what to do. You know, um, but I need you in this moment, and I don't, I don't know what the situation is going to turn out to be. I don't, I don't even know if there's going to be a resolution, but I know that you're with me. It's easy to go to God when you're having a bunch of success and everything is going well, but it's hard to go to God when things aren't going well, because then you start to doubt His power and you start to doubt His capabilities for you. I think the biggest thing of dealing with anxiety is to not get stuck in your own thoughts. Like, don't look at yourself as less than, don't look at yourself as not being capable. Um, those anxious moments might still come, you know, that, no matter how strong your faith is, those anxious moments might come. Um, but I challenge you to put yourself in good environments, to check your life zones and say, are my relationships where they need to be? Is my purpose being lived out? Am I leaving a legacy, right? Like, check your heart and really see where you're aligned because I think that's the root of all of this is like where our heart placement is, is where our life trajectory looks. And I think oftentimes we don't wanna sit with that because it's uncomfortable and that's literally what anxiety is. You know, it's uncomfortable. You have the best advocator right there because he lived it. And I think that's something that we have to remember. All right, man. All of that was some powerful stuff. And even listening to everyone's different stories, there's some things that I know that I can personally take away in my life. One of the things that really stood out to me was when Michael shared his story about having to learn to trust God and let go. And in the last segment, you referenced Philippians chapter four and letting go and trusting God. I do think around anxiety, a lot of people struggle with the letting go part. Yeah. You know, they, we read the scriptures. There's a lot of people that are in their slot and spot. Um, they're doing all the things that they're getting on a weekend and they're carried into their everyday work week, but they're still dealing with it. And it's like, okay, I have all those things. I've done all those things. I'm just having a hard time letting go and trusting God. And like it's not working. Yes. Yeah. You know, or not working fast enough. How long is God going to, you know, sure. take to step in because it's the pressure's mounting. Yeah. You know, I'm feeling it more and more. And um, I really don't know where to go, where yeah. to turn. Yeah. yeah, I think it's with this subject, it is very important that sometimes we're giving very simple advice, which is important, but it can't be simplistic, right? It's, yeah, people recognize the battle is real. And, you know, I, I, I've tried praying, you know, I've tried worshiping, I've tried letting go. I've let go 713 times today so far, you know, and I can relate to that in a big way. Um, and I think part of it for me, I could just tell you my experience because again, just the way I opened this, it has not gone away for me. This is a daily process for me and some days are better than other days. But I know a few years ago, I feel like it was a turning point for me when I realized what am I expecting my letting go to accomplish? Mm. And I realized, oh, I wanna let go so I can get control back. Well, that's not really what letting go actually means. Letting go means letting go. So I had a moment in my time with anxiety where I felt like God kind of was asking me, if you feel this way for the rest of your life, can you still trust me? Mm. Or do you need a certain outcome? Is, is this process for you of pursuing me only based on if you do, I will make this easier for you or I'll fix this for you or you won't have these emotions or thoughts anymore? Or is it because you genuinely wanna let go of your life to me, surrender your life to me? And so it's not a simplistic thing. It's not like let go and your life will immediately get better or how long will it take? I don't know. I, 
some of our circumstances and issues may never be resolved in this life. Mm. That's a very scary thing, but I think yeah, people don't say that enough. That's real. And I leave people with the impression that somehow faith is going to make everything in my life externally align in a way that I'll no longer be anxious. That's, that was never promised by Jesus. What was promised is that we could have closeness with him and we could learn to find a settledness in our souls, even in the midst of those anxious feelings and realities. So yeah, it can sound very simplistic, just let go. Um, but I think when we begin to understand that our letting go can't be a sneaky way to get back control, mm. it's really like about letting go. I'm not in control yeah. of what happens to me and around me and ultimately with me. I am choosing daily, sometimes minute by minute, to surrender that to a power that's greater than me. That's and and that's the, I think that's the path, yeah. But it's not a quick fix, for sure. Yeah, fix. yeah. That's, no, that's all really good. And I think, I think there's another tension that we kind of have to manage a little bit here when we're talking about fear and anxiety and mental health and things like that. And I can remember, you know, um, you know, as I was a, a young adult and kind of dealing with some of these issues of anxiety, um, one of the things I remember is that the church, and not any specific church, but kind of the church as a whole, didn't really face it head on and didn't really deal with it. And I remember these things coming up and a lot of times it was, it was, it was pray more, read your Bible more, go to church more, and don't discount those things at all. We need to be doing those things. We need to lean into what God has given us, the support system that our creator has given us in those times of anxiety. We do need to connect more with God and with his people. Um, but I think sometimes that was the easy answer and it made some people feel like maybe if, if I need extra help, then I don't have enough faith. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder what would you say if there, there are people who are kind of watching this and, and they feel like, hey, if I go to counseling or if I go and get therapy or something like that, it feels like I don't have enough faith. Yeah. I think, unfortunately, in in Christianity, sometimes we can be very reductionistic, if I can use that word. I think that's a word, but we just, we kind of try to quickly boil things down and get to some simplistic answer. And we've, we, like that verse that I read is not the only verse in the Bible. Right. You know, sometimes we have like a go-to verse, but there's a reason there's a whole book uh, called Philippians that has lots of other verses, which is one of 66 books, you know, in the Bible. And uh, yeah, we forget that we are whole beings. We are not just a mind. We're not just a body. We're not just a spirit. We're all of those things. Sometimes my mind needs counseling. Sometimes my body needs medication. Sometimes my soul needs rest and, and an opportunity to rejuvenate and go for a walk on a sunny day, you know? I am all those things. So I think when scripture tells us to pray, yeah, we've we've interpreted that as like when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? And we kind of go, we act like we could just pray and not respect the fact that the one who called us to pray gives us all kinds of other information sure. about how we're created and what our spirits and hearts and minds and bodies need to be healthy and to thrive. And so I think, yeah, I mean, that's a great thing that we just need to address head on is that there is no shame in being anxious. And I, that again leads us back to that place where so many of us struggle with it. It's like we don't want to say it because we don't want to get the simplistic answer or we don't want to feel like a second class citizen. Um, but I think when we can begin to understand that, that we are holistic beings that God created and every part of us needs attention and longs for wholeness and healing, then we can start to do some of those things without shame. And I wonder how many of us resent prayer mm. yeah. because it was handed to us as a simplistic solution. Well, what a, what a disaster because prayer is powerful, yeah. but we've kind of dismissed it. Some of us are actually guilty, I think, of the opposite. Like we've, we started to go, well, that doesn't, you know, that's not the only answer. And now it's not even part of our answer. Oh, and God's right. saying, man, no, no, come back into this. I've got a, you're a whole person. I want to do a work in your whole life. And this is part of that process. And you learn to pray, not like you got a hammer and you're pounding in a nail, but you learn to pray because you got a relationship and you're leaning into that. And that I think can really make a difference. Yeah, yeah no, that's good. And kind of a, kind of a part B to that question. I was thinking about it, you know, 
while a lot of what I just described, there might be people dealing with that that's in the room today, but there's also people who don't even have a faith foundation. And so all they're, all they're doing, the only tools they have are therapy or counseling yeah. and things like that. And so I think my question for both of you, if you can't answer it, is like, as you've dealt with anxiety and you've been able to lean in on your faith, as a believer, not as a pastor, how has that helped you kind of deal with your own anxieties? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I think for me, I think what I love about our church is how we have the gather, connect, serve model. And it's the connecting piece for me. You know, put myself around other like-minded individuals that can help me, where I can be in environments where I can share what's going on in my personal life and see that I'm not the only person in this room that's dealing with it. And then hearing their perspectives, then taking those tidbits home and practicing those every day combined with my slot and spot and then continue to show up to church on Sunday and then continue to kind of repeat that. And now once I start getting it, I feel just a little bit stronger. I feel a little bit, you know, closer to God. And I feel like, all right, I can do this. It's still hard. The problem still exists. Uh, but I have people that are praying with me. So that's how I've been able to cope with it and, um, you know, make progress. Yeah, that's good. Me. I mean, I, we did, we built our church around this path of spiritual growth and formation of we gather and we connect, we serve. When we gather, it lifts our souls to a higher plane. Yeah. And I do think it's important. It's not like come to church and your anxieties will go away. Um, for some of us coming to church might even be a trigger for some of our anxieties. And that's a challenging thing. But being willing to kind of face that and recognize it, if I'll allow it to, gathering with other people to worship God lifts my soul to a higher plane. Because everything we do when we gather is saying, we're not in control, but right. someone is. Yeah. And, you know, we have hope because of that. And then we talk about, as part of that gather piece, in, investing in relationships with people who don't know Jesus and inviting them to experience God with us. Well, anxiety is an inward focus. When we turn our focus outward, that is a great way to combat our anxiety. Because the moment I start thinking about what you need, I can stop thinking so much about what I need. That's good. And what I need is what's given me anxiety, right? So, and then as, as Daryl mentioned, you know, we connect in groups, we do life with people who are going the same direction we are spiritually. We practice a slot and spot, that time and place with God. And when we serve on the J team, I think you can look at all of these as ways to interrupt anxiety. Because when I serve on the J team, again, I'm, I am living in my purpose and purpose is actually the best I think antidote to anxiety long term is to say, I've got, there's something to me beyond what I'm feeling right now. It's something I can do to make a difference in the life of someone else. And when we give, when we, uh, followers of Jesus are generous with our finances, well, we do that to honor Jesus and to change lives, but we also do it to make it clear. My trust for my financial condition is not ultimately in me, it's in God. Yeah. And that's a way that I just make that clear over and over again. So that path is not a quick fix but journeyed steadily for a long period of time with faith in God, it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. And it puts us in a place where it's not that anxiety doesn't show up, but we know how to interrupt it. It teaches us how to breathe and how to really be in the presence of God. So, you know, for, for all of us today, as we get ready to wrap up this time together, um, I think most of us would say we have experienced anxiety. Most yes. of us would say we have experienced it recently. You know, it is, it is a very real part of our lives. But I hope we're reminded today as well that there's a very real God who is watching over us, wants to guard our hearts and minds, and wants to be with us. And I think the last thing I would say is what Lindsay kind of led with is that so often we're hesitant to welcome God into this space with us, right? We, yeah. we feel like our anxiety actually makes us blocked off from God. But in the scriptures, there's a Psalm, Psalm 139, 23, where the, the guy who wrote this Psalm says, search me, O God, and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. That's an invitation that says, I don't feel ashamed that I'm anxious. I know I need your help. And I think there's just power in telling him, God, I feel anxious right now. Would you meet me in this moment? 